It's one of the most well-known radar signatures out there, but it's also typically one of the most misunderstood. That's right, we're talking about hook echoes today. We're gonna to talk about how you might be able to tell if this one is dangerous or not. Several different ways we're gonna be able to look at this. We're gonna look at several different angles. I'm really excited about this video and I can't wait to get started right after this. Now, before we can get into whether a hook echo is dangerous or not, we actually need to start by just simply answering the question, what is a hook echo? Well, you know it when you see it, right? If you have been around weather long enough, you know that these things are little appendages at the end of supercells, usually on that southwest or west side. And some, I mean, I, I see this all the time on social media, people really misunderstanding what this is about because you, you'll see a hook and people will get really excited. But not all hooks are the same. Every storm is different and we're gonna break down why they're dangerous and why they're not because a hook echo is simply that visual manifestation on radar of the rear flank downdraft wrapping around the updraft. When you see it on radar, it's simply that rain wrapping around the updraft. You can see where the updraft is simply by where that hook echo is wrapping around. But also, just as importantly, in person, you can see this happening as well with those rain curtains underneath an updraft base wrapping around the mesocyclone. We're gonna look at a few different examples in both radar and in real life to kind of show what this looks like. But I think the best place we can go now, well, it's very simple. What makes a hook echo dangerous? So our next question we really have to take a second to answer is do hook echoes automatically mean tornadoes are possible? And the quick answer is no. Not every hook echo is going to signal that a tornado is even possible. Sometimes hooks are simply part of a process of a supercell, even if that supercell has no realistic chance of producing a tornado. You see it all the time. What are some examples of how a hook echo would not be uh, leading to a tornado no matter what. One would be if the storm is elevated. You can see uh, these hooks on elevated storms, which if a storm is elevated, that means it's rooted above the surface. An elevated storm by its nature cannot produce a tornado because it's not surface-based. Tornadoes are surface-based phenomena. Another one though, would be if a storm is very high base. Some people call this elevated, but they're different things. Uh, a very high base storm with a hook may not be that conducive to producing tornadoes. You see these little appendages all the time. You also see appendages that are kind of hooks, but not really, but they're really long. And it's just hard, right? So th those are just, that's two examples of how this works in real life. But there are those more nebulous, harder to understand examples where there is a hook echo. The environment may even like support tornadoes, but does that mean a tornado is definitely gonna happen? No. And here's a few examples to show maybe how this is gonna work out in real life. This is an example from May 23rd, 2024. On this though, you can see the hook echo on the bottom left side. Very typical location. You will typically find hooks on the south and west side of storms. Looking at this storm at the same time, you can see there's a lowering under this thing. But is this dangerous? Let's talk about it. This lowering looks very ominous, very low to the ground. But the thing I noticed, the first thing I noticed is that it was slanted away from the precip as if there was outflow from the core of the storm pushing air in the lowest levels, undercutting this updraft. That's because this storm was rather high based. If you take a look at radar, the hook is clearly here, right? I don't see anything really wrapping around the mezzo at this point, but what I do see on velocity is a couplet. This is interesting. This is a great example of how context matters because the reflectivity looks great. The velocity looks great. Radar looks amazing. So if you're looking at radar, you think, oh, tornado is about to happen because you also know there's a risk of tornadoes today. But if you look in the field, you see this storm is high base. You see there's no real organized lowering and thus, this thing is not close to producing a tornado. It's just a really good modern day example of why storm chasers are pretty necessary. Now, another storm to look at here is this one southwest of Alton, Texas. There's a little bit of a hook on the south side. In fact, this hook looks a little alarming because you can see it very clearly. 
It's very subtle, but it also looks like it's wrapped up closer to the storm, which usually means the mesocyclone is occluding or really, really wrapped up. This usually means a tornado might be ongoing. This is alarming to see uh, if you are looking at a supercell. But if you take a look at velocity, you're going to get a different story. When you flip it over to velocity and you co-locate the location of the hook, you can see there's not really a low level lock. There's not a lot of rotation. You can see the bright greens that are spreading around the backside of this storm, but you're not seeing the bright inbounds. This usually means that there's a pretty strong set of downdrafts in the storm, but the storm isn't really catching a lot of inflow. And if you take a look at this storm visually, you're gonna see this in action. So this image at first glance looks very, very menacing, right? Big, low hanging wall cloud here in the middle, but look around it, the base is flat, pretty featureless. This is this screams elevated storm to me, actually. Again, elevated storms can have low cloud bases. And if you look at this low feature here, there's not a lot of rotation. There's not a lot of rising motion into it. Very interesting. It's almost like it's trying to get some surface parcels, but it's not really. And if you can see here on the left, this is RFD. Right is the front flank downdraft. This is a very linear looking storm too. Without the ro rotation, without the rising motion in the base, this really doesn't scream tornado to me. Again, another example where storm chasers are oftentimes better spotters than people looking at radar. Our next case study comes in two parts. This first part, here's your storm, has a big hook on it, and if you look visually, there is a tornado ongoing. But look over here at Velocity, it's kind of nebulous. So this is a case where the ground truth is really revealing on what's going on, because if you look back here visually, you can see this tornado, that horseshoe cut, which is that hook echo that that's surging around this storm has really uh, moved around this tornado. It's occluding, it's weakening, it's on that trend. Now, let's bump forward just a little bit in time. Now, to add just a little bit more confusion to this, possibly, the hook way less prominent here. Are, but you go over to velocity and suddenly the velocities look way better. This LP storm looks like it's cranking up to produce yet another tornado. But then we switch over to the visual view of this storm and the base is flat and featureless. In fact, you go back over to reflectivity, you can see the storm is actually shrinking at this point. And now with the base looking like this, this tells me actually, despite the fact the low level meso looks strong, this storm is actually becoming elevated and dying all at the same time, which it actually was doing. So we've seen several real life examples now, right? And we, we kind of are getting a feeling for how this might work. The big thing is though, how do you really tell if a hook echo is dangerous? Well, here's the answer. It all depends on the context of the situation. I know this is shocking. We've already hinted at this a few times, but what you wanna know is what is the environment going on around it? What else is radar saying? If there's a hook, but no real strong velocity signature, the odds of a tornado in that storm are pretty low because there's not much rotation indicated. At the same time, there may be a strong hook and even strong rotation, but we know the environment absolutely is not supporting surface-based storms. This is oftentimes backed up very helpfully by people like me out in the field storm chasing, but you also can get a feel for that. Uh, the environmental conditions are a huge tell as to whether a hook is dangerous or not, as well as all the other contextual clues within radar. So the key is, as we've talked about, you wanna make sure that you're looking at all the possible contextual clues around a storm. Everything relies on context when it comes to severe weather because there are exceptions to every single rule. We've talked about that over and over again, but if you wanna learn about those rules and some of the exceptions, my recommendation, well, you wanna subscribe, be sure to check out the video that's popping up on your screen right about now. And remember, weather's for everybody. That includes you. Hope you are learned a little bit about hook echoes and we will see you next time.